All right, guys, welcome. I'm glad that you're here. If you're someone who is seeking uncommon results, this podcast is for you. Success, happiness, and wisdom. What do these words mean to you? I think we can all agree that we'll probably all have slightly different definitions of each. In these podcasts, I get to dive deeply into conversations with some amazing innovators, influencers, and trendsetters that have had different versions of how they define the terms, yet have come out on the other side with amazing, uncommon results. At some point in their lives, they have decided to unshackle themselves from the norm and go beyond all boundaries. Well, thanks everybody for joining another broadcast of uh, Beyond All Boundaries. I'm John Dwyer, the host, and I have a good friend and a great guest today, Jim Manning. Uh, Thanks for being on, Jim. Hey, thanks for having me, John. Anytime, man. (laughs) So today I want to dig in with, and Jim, Jim, from what I've got to know about Jim, Jim is just one of these guys who just in my opinion, has it together. I, I mean, I'm not just trying to blow smoke up there, Jim, but like, I think that, you know, with, with, with the things that I've been able to spend time with you on and, and through your business and, and even getting to know Ryan, your business partner um, through three doors. Um, I'm excited to have this podcast because I think there are so many things that like life lessons and things that you've done um, throughout your business and your journey. I think a lot of people can, um, learn from you. So again, thanks for being on. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. And um, uh, yeah, I like to think I have it together more than Facebook together. <laughs> <You know? laughs> well, yeah, we were just joking about that too, right? Yeah, we were. Uh, yeah, and Ryan sends his regards. Ryan has uh, COVID right now, my business partner, and he, you know, he would have loved to be on as well. But well, hopefully, uh, uh, hopefully he feels better. Yeah, that's the world I, we live in. So, right? so yeah, so I mean, just a little bit about uh, background about myself, guys. Uh, I've been an entrepreneur for over 13 years now, Uh, started out in corporate America, and I just kind of knew it wasn't for me. It was a great company, and um, I was pushing paperwork. I would do a great job one month, and the the boss wouldn't notice. I'd do a a poor job the next month, wouldn't notice, and um, I just kind of decided I wanted to do something that uh, had a little bit more value to the world, a a little bit more self-worth, and then something that uh, gave me financial upside as well. Uh, So I just kind of stumbled upon... um, a uh, bunch of investment books, would read like Warren Buffett. I'd read um, uh, all sorts of real estate investing books, you name it. And, and real estate's kind of what I fell in love with and started our uh, investment company back 13 years ago. So talk about corporate America. What Were you doing anything in relation to what you're doing now and in, in, in investing in real estate or what, what were you doing? Uh, so it was a, yeah, it was a job right out of college. It was just reinsurance. Uh, so a lot of people don't even know that that exists. Uh, it's, yeah. You insure insurance companies, basically, yeah. uh, in simplistic terms. And um, uh, yeah, it was a great job, great, great company. And and I knew within about a couple hours when I got hired on on day one that I was like, oh, this job isn't for me. So, uh, so what I did, how I got out of the corporate America was, you know, I was very young, you know, I was just 22, uh, fortunate enough to not have any student debt. And I, uh, started investing in, uh, an Apple stock, uh, when my paychecks hit, I'd buy some more Apple stock. Uh, this was back before the first iPhone came out. Uh, so I was wow. buying a bunch of Apple stock and then, um, uh, was able to double my money in 12 months. So $5,000 turned into 10, and then I did my first flip and I made another 10,000. So as a 23 year old, I had 20,000 in the bank, thought I was rich. And <laughs> I thought you were going to Vegas now. <laughs> just decided, I'm doing this. I'm starting my company. And my mom had about, my mom and dad had heart attacks, you know, cause they're oh, wow. you know, middle class and, and the whole entrepreneurial thing was just, you know, they didn't, they thought you went to school, got a job and kind of worked your whole life. And, and, um, so then, yeah, I got in, in full fledged and, um, pretty much lost the money within the next 18 months <laughs> to two years on, on uh, playing around, had lots of ups and downs. And, and I think the, um, um, you know, what's interesting is uh, what I've learned being an entrepreneur um, is, is there's been, I want to say probably three moments in our business that were like, oh my God, moments like, is the company going to make it? Am I going to go under? Am I the real deal or not? And, um, uh, one of the moments actually, as I'm thinking about it was, uh, back in 2010, um, I was visiting my grandma and I, I ended up fa- think the last thought I remember in my head was I, I was my grandma's going to die. She was internally bleeding at the time. Like we were at the hospital and I passed out, you know, I, I just, from the stress, I think of the business not going all that well. And then this thing with my grandma, I passed out and then I smoked my head on a concrete floor. 
uh, and had two seizures because I hit my head so hard. Holy cow. And I remember sitting there in the hospital bed thinking like, oh my gosh, you know, like, am I going to have to admit to my, all my friends, all my family, like I, I did this real estate thing. It looks like I'm this big success. And I'm going to have to admit to everybody that I have three properties that um, are three flips that are on the market right now that aren't selling. Uh, all of my livelihood, everything I've done the past couple of years is invested in those houses. Uh, and I'm about to lose money on all of them. And I've, I've been living on credit card debt just to, just to eat, you know, wow. and <clears throat> And, you know, then going through that and then I, I, you know, and I didn't know at that time I had to wait two days to get test results. <clears throat> I didn't know if I was dying or if I was, um, uh, or if I was going to be okay. Now, if I was okay, the doctor told me it was going to take six months before I could drive again. So I was dealing with all these business problems and I, I realized I had six months and throughout that weekend, um, uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, Kelly was, uh, was there by my side the entire time. She slept in the most uncomfortable uh, <laughs> hospital chair. Like it wasn't even like a couch or anything. It was just like this, like really uncomfortable reclining chair. And I remember looking at her and I kind of had like a moment of clarity. And I remember praying about it. And I said, Hey, I mean, you know, God, please help me if it's the health thing and I can't do anything. And, you know, I can't do anything about that. But right. if it is like a, just a one-time thing that I just kind of got stressed and freaked out, and, you know, and I'm going to be okay. Uh, I want, um, you know, like I want to, you know, help me because I want to marry this girl. I can't mm -hmm. afford to buy a ring for her right now, but I'm going to do everything I can to buy a ring for her. And so it was simultaneously the best moment of my life and the worst, because, uh, you know, that was kind of when I realized, man, I have the woman I want to spend the rest of my life with. And at the same time, I, I, I didn't have the money. I couldn't afford <laughs> to even propose to her. Um, <laughs> So, so what I learned through this and the reason why I even brought this story up is, is, um, you know, John, you kind of shared with me, a lot of this is about kind of entrepreneurs and, and overcoming mm -hmm. challenges. Um, before that moment, I was hustling and I was do, I was busy and I was really trying to, um, uh, kind of get this real estate thing off the ground. Um, but I didn't necessarily have like a, like a white hot burning why behind it. Yep. You know, I was doing it, but like, like I, you know, there was like another whole level that I had that I wasn't aware I had. When I got to that clarity moment, it didn't matter that I was living in credit off credit cards. It didn't matter that I had three houses. I was going to lose my shirt on. Um, I knew what I wanted just with crystal clarity. I had the vision of marrying Kelly yep. and, and I had a bunch of obstacles, a bunch of suckiness that got in my way. And, and, you know, like, like when I got that crystal clear on the vision of, 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 um, kind of like my future life and what I wanted. I mean, it, you know, we just kind of worked through those obstacles and, you know, and was able to propose about 18 months later. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. So tell me about, so when, it, when was three doors born? Um, you know, cause I mean, you and Ryan now have been partners for how long? Uh, since 2010. 2010. Um, and we used to be called STL, STL real estate, but we decided to change the name to three doors because uh, we thought it more accurate, accurately um, uh, matched our value proposition for people. Um, and like, you know, we don't really consider ourselves even like real estate agents. We consider ourselves real estate advisors uh, because we want to help people make appropriate decisions. Like, for example, we had a uh, we had a client that's going to make uh, over $20,000 more for their house than had they sold it on the market uh, because we brought them a, a investment vehicle uh, known as owner financing. And, you know, we made them aware of that. And they, and he said, absolutely. I'd, I'd like to make 320 bucks a month passive uh, after I sell this instrument, after I sell this house and, and retain that. So, uh, so with three doors, it's really a play on, um, the value that we provide and the opportunities that we open up uh, for our clients here in, in St. Louis. So do you guys, do you guys work all over the country, Jim, or is it mostly just in the St. Louis area? Uh, so as far as the active deals that we're doing, it's in the St. Louis area. Uh, we do have kind of goals and aspirations to get out of St. Louis one day. Yeah. Um, uh, that will be coming. Um, and we're, I think we're about another year out before we uh, before we start kind of tackling that and and uh yeah i mean i'm proud of the team man i mean we did we helped over 600 uh people in in 2021 so that's uh you know like uh i mean it, 
<laughs> we don't have enough time for me to brag on my team, but they're incredible. That's awesome. Um, they're amazing. So what, you know, um, from an entrepreneur, because you, it sounds like, so you and Ryan were partners from pretty much the beginning then. Uh, yeah, so we were, uh, so I started in 2008. And we were collaborating and doing some deals together, but yeah, we, it, it became official in 2010. Yeah. So, you know, I think it'd be interesting to share because, it, you know, partnerships are one of those things, right? When you go into yeah. partnership, it's like, and you guys have, I mean, and I've seen it firsthand in our, in our study group, right? About how you guys interact and, and are always challenging each other and, and, and the partnership, right? Like it's not, share a little bit about like from your mindset and Ryan's not here to defend himself. So we can just pick on <laughs> how you yeah. are, but, um, <laughs> But, you know, from a partnership standpoint, what has made the partnership work? Um, and I think it's always just from an entrepreneur's side, you know, because partnerships can either be awesome or they can just, it, it's, you don't hear it very often to where they're long lasting. And I think you guys have. Done yeah. That. So kind of like, what's the secret there? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, as far as like, I mean, there's two different things to this guys. The first is, is like the dating period or the choosing of the business partner. And then the second is uh, retaining or, or keeping that relationship going. Uh, if I'm talking just about like the criteria on how I find and vet and kind of decide I want to work with a partner, um, the biggest thing or the biggest mistake I think people make is that they only value the personality meshing and the, and the relationship and how you get along with someone. Okay. So your values that you have as a person and the vision that you have and that you want going forward, uh, that's the core and that's the first step. And it absolutely has to be there. Uh, if it's somebody that you don't get along with great and they don't want the same thing, the same things that you do and they have the same vision moving forward, uh, then that's a non-start right there. Um, you should, uh, you know, should, you should just be stay friends and not be partners. But then the second step that I think most people don't actually um, uh, get to is uh, it's not just about being friends with somebody. And we tend to like people that are just like us, right? Um, there has to be a synergy in your skill sets. So I would be the world's worst business partner for myself. If you cloned me, like there would not be synergy there because we're good at the exact same things where, you know, we struggle. I have glaring weaknesses in my skill set, right? right? Um, one of my things that's really good is I have all these ideas. And one of the things that's really bad is I have all these ideas. <laughs> you have all these ideas. <laughs> yeah, man, you and I. Are so, so if I was partners with myself, we would just be brainstorming <laughs> on a whiteboard all day. Yeah, your whiteboard like, would be full. <laughs> oh man, we'd have the most brilliant whiteboard ever, but we wouldn't make any money at that. It'd be the, day, the right? it'd be the biggest broke ass visionary there was. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, and and that's not uncommon, guys. If you look at like Walt Disney. Walt Disney was broke and he was not Disney until his brother came along. Mm. Walt, you, we would not know who Walt Disney was if it wasn't for his brother coming along and bringing um, kind of more the integrator uh, skill set to the table. Uh, he, was for, a, he was an amazing visionary and dreamer. Right? Exactly. I mean, he had the dream and the vision, but he, yeah, that's, that's, all, that's a really good point. Yeah. So, so then that's the part. So as far as like picking and choosing, uh, that's really like what goes into my head. It has, it's a value fit, a vision fit, and then a skill set fit. Okay. If I had to kind of recap it in, in three words and then moving forward uh, as far as retaining and, and like keeping the, the, the partnership thriving, um, I really think it's a uh, partners make mistakes and it's the same way as like a marriage. Uh, like you can either grow together a little bit every day or you can grow apart a little bit every day. Mm -hmm. And if you guys are in a marriage, if you're just like coexisting and you're getting the kids to school and then you're going to work and then you're just going to bed at night and there's not like that open line of communication, uh, that's when relationships tend to really struggle. And, and so we make it a point. Uh, one of the things that's been crazy beneficial for us is to have a same page meeting uh, that we do. Uh, we don't do it every week, but we, ne we need to do it every week. And it's in our calendar uh, to spend at least 30 minutes together just communicating 
on what's going on in each other's worlds. Mm -hmm. And it, and it, sometimes it's, it's more than even just business, what's going on with each other's kids and, and families and making sure that we are, um, taking care of our most important work relationship that we have in our lives and making sure that we're solid there. And, uh, I mean, over 10 years, yeah, I mean, we've had, uh, like any relationship, we've had a lot of ups and downs. We've had a lot of, um, uh, uh, disagreements and, um, a lot of conflict, but when you can be open and honest and have a, a true dialogue and what you're truly feeling, uh, it makes all the difference in the world. And when, you know, going through those challenges or the times of conflicts, would you guys like sometimes bring in a mediator or would it just be a matter of just trying to sit down and, 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 you know, kind of like within a marriage, oh. you know, not, not be selfish. Right. But like, so that's a great question and and we would do it one on one individually and uh uh the most recent kind of like um challenge that we've had in our uh relationship we did bring in one of our mentors on one of the disagreements that we we're having and that I wish I wish we had done that for um Dinner. our entire partnership mm -hmm. uh, because it does get to be a, a challenge if you <clears throat> 95% of the time, like we typically agree, and then there's a right call on something. But mm -hmm. that 5% when we truly don't, um, having a third person there um, is invaluable to, and it's not even the, the third person's feedback as much as like, okay, they're there, like, like it can help you keep kind of a level head and not get your emotions right. running away from you. Uh, so yeah, so that I'd highly recommend that. I, I, I wish we had done that earlier, for sure. That's cool. So what, I mean, in the last year, um, I mean, you know, 2021, I mean, you guys have been growing like leaps and bounds. What would you attribute to that? And what things, you know, have you put in place or things that, um, what would be, do you think has been the biggest part of your success? I, uh, you know, what's interesting is um, uh, I think the single most important uh, thing in business is having a, um, having a value focus that you're going to provide more value and create your own uh, unique selling proposition, your own, your own value proposition to your clients. And like, and um, um, the issue with that or the struggle with that, I think is that I think a lot of entrepreneurs, we like know that and we understand that. Uh, but then we just go after a hundred different types of clients and a hundred different ways to do it. And we, you know, before we know it, we look up and and uh, Ryan and I looked up about five years ago, we looked up and we we're like, holy cow, we have like seven businesses here. <laughs> and none of them are, and all of them are just doing like, okay, they're like average, you know, and, and to everybody else, they see the hundreds of deals we're doing. And they see like, oh my gosh, these guys must have it made. And then, uh, I mean, one of the years we did so many deals, we literally like broke our, <laughs> broke our business and the profit margins shrunk dramatically and we lost control of all the expenses. And we, we looked back and we're like, we just broke even and we did <laughs> 500 deals, you know? That's crazy. And, and that's what happens when the focus gets so spread right. out. Right. So, so uh, what we've been doing lately to, to 10x our profit at the end of the day. And it's not even necessarily our, our, our revenues, our revenues did go up 20% this year, but, uh, but even before that, the, the last year when our profit margin went up too, um, uh, we've been really trying to focus in everything. Okay. Well, we have seven different revenue streams coming in. Well, what's the most valuable revenue stream, right. you know, like where are we making our money? And then, then, then who out of those, who are the people uh, that we enjoy working with the most and really trying to say, okay, well, like let's focus in our value to serve our ideal client <laughs> in the ideal way that they want to be served. And then if uh, out of the seven revenue streams, um, if one of them's really lagging behind, um, you have to be willing to kind of cut it and say, no, I'm going to go all in on, on this other one. And uh, so by narrowing it and focusing it in, um, it's almost like, um, oh my gosh, what's his name? It's Michael. I can't even say his last name. Um, Michalowicz or something like that. It has a book called the pumpkin plan and he has a really good, uh, very good read. And it's a, a really good process for it. 
Um, but basically, if you can view the entity as, as just one business, even if there's different avenues to yeah. it or different streams to it, how do you kind of focus and narrow it all in into in growing just one giant pumpkin um, uh, for yourself? And since we've done that and we've brought it in, um, yeah, I mean, I, like last year was, oh my goodness. I mean, last year, I think we made 10 times what we've ever made in a year. I mean, it was a unbelievable year for us. And, um, um, and we did it while shrinking our marketing budget, $20,000 a month, <laughs> you know? So just because by being aware of that, I'm really trying to get right. hyper-focused. And just being, yeah. being more efficient on the streams. So how often do you guys try to put that in your, in your, in your, um, same page meetings or planning meetings? I mean, do you guys have different meetings throughout the week on you know, other than the same page, but do you, do you guys set a time? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a, evaluate that or how are you guys doing that? Yeah. So we have a director's meeting that's for 90 minutes every week with our, with our leadership and our, so our, uh, our operations team, there's about 15 of us on there. You know, then we have, as far as salespeople, we have 30 sale, 30 active salespeople. Then we have some that are a little bit more on the passive side on top of that. So uh, I don't know when you become a mid-sized company. I guess we're a mid-sized, a very small mid-sized company now. I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but, um, but yeah, so we meet once a week with leadership. Then we have, and I have the same page uh, with Ryan once a week. And then we have different divisions that will meet. Like our ops team will meet just with themselves once a week. Our, um, um, we, so we have a lease purchasing division that really helps uh uh, that's kind of our, our, uh, unique selling proposition or our value add for, for creating financial freedom inventory. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's what we have a whole division around that. So they, they do a 90 minute meeting once a week, and then we have a, a team training once a week. And that's, that's really what we do for meetings. Um, um, and then our goal setting, we, uh, we do have an, uh, two day, every quarter we spend two days, uh, mapping out the, either the year in the fourth quarter, we map out the year and the next quarter. And then, um, and then we, or, you know, at the end of this quarter, we'll just map out what we're going to do in the second quarter. So how often do you guys like, so, you know, and, and, uh, you know, for the listeners out there too, like we, we spend a lot of time, you know, Jim and I have working on our visions and stuff. So when you guys working on your visions, are you and Ryan doing that separately? Or do you try to do a vision together from three doors as well? Uh, so we do the personal separate. And then, yeah, and then we collaborate on the, you know, so we have like a three-year uh, vision uh, that we update every year at the end of the year. Uh, you know, it's just kind of a way to um, kind of rally the troops and make sure we're all focused on the same thing. Yeah. And this, this, and it may sound like we have our acts together and, and we have them way more together than we ever have. <laughs> and like in the grand scheme of things, if you compare us to like, you know, like an IBM or, you know, something like that. I mean, we're just, you know, we're still figuring it out. We're not, uh, we're not perfect at it, but we're, we're better than we've ever been. And, and that's really all I ask of the team is, is let's just be a little bit better today than we were yesterday. So, well, but I, I think too, it's important, right. Is that you guys have, um, you know, let the egos go and really, in my opinion, you know, look at, okay, where, where are the areas that we're, we're weak in? Um, and I've seen you and Ryan both have those conversations, um, you know, of, of just letting your ego aside and, and listening to understand and, and, and making the team better, right. From a perspective of, you know, it's so easy to get just buried in your business to where you don't pay pull your head out and recognize of areas of the weaknesses and things that you can maybe slow down and speed up a little bit. Right. And I think that'd be one thing that I, I, you know, and I've just seen you guys, you know, a couple of times throughout the year having these conversations, right. But just, um, do you think that that's because Jim, I think you, you know, you're the visionary, but I think you're also very methodical in, in your thought process. I mean, would I, would I, am I wrong by saying that? Yeah, no, I do. And I can think through Lynn, like systems in a step one, step two, step three. Yeah. I'm a little bit of a, and I can, I can get stuff done too. So I, you know, they say like, there's not really like a one size fits all for what a visionary should or shouldn't be. And, and so there's blends. And then I have um, uh, some of the things visionaries, you know, there's an overlap. I think I'm like a 98% fit if you take a EOS visionary test or whatever. But, you know, that doesn't mean that um, there's other stuff I can't do. And that doesn't mean that everything a visionary should be good at. I am all that great at, you know, so. And so, what, do you, 
what do you see? What do you see Ryan is like, what, is, what, what's Ryan's strengths? So what, what strengths do you guys really play off on each other? Yeah. So Ryan, um, uh, Ryan's strengths are in like production as mm -hmm. far as like getting stuff done. If a decision, the quality decisions needed to be made quickly. Uh, yeah, he's very strong. We'll, we'll typically make really quality decisions there. Um, and really kind of like one-on-one -on -one, he's very solid and kind of like mentoring our team on what's a good deal what's not and, mm -hmm. and um also over the years like we have about uh you know we've been investing about 18 million dollars worth of private individuals money in real estate i think last year we i'm really proud of this we created uh 120 a month of passive income for uh uh, for our, for our, uh, because we exist as a company. And so over the last 13 years, we've had a hundred percent success rate on that. And, um, um, and he really had, was instrumental in even, um, building relationships and kind of, uh, bringing in, bringing in funds so that we can kind of invest into, into St. Louis real estate here. So, so when you guys, when you guys have your meeting is Ryan, sometimes like Jim, you gotta slow down. You got to do this one thing first or how do you guys interact? With that? You know, I mean, there's, you know, when we're out of whack, like the whole team can feel it. It's like, <laughs> you know, like, and then when we're, uh, yeah, I mean, he, uh, uh, it is interesting. I mean, it's like a yin and a yang uh, yeah. often. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned, you mentioned what, and I want to kind of go back because you mentioned, <clears throat> you shared the story about, you know, the, 2010 right where you hit your head and like it was all coming down and you mentioned there was three other times what what would um what would you say in those three times or um those times of like despair what got you to get to where you are today like what was it was it just sheer desire of not failure or what, what do you think it was? So, you know, so uh, real quick, and I will answer that question, but as you were asking it, I, I, um, uh, I just have recently had an awareness. I'm reading a book that a CEO wrote, um, his last name's Horowitz. It's like the hard thing about hard things. It's a fantastic book. Um, but he wrote in there that, that, that he says like, what people don't really tell you is that every company has three or four, oh my God, are we going to make it moments? Moments, yeah. So, so just so you know, like it may sound like one of your friends <laughs> is doing really well, like it may look like they are, but that doesn't mean they are, okay? Right. So if you're in the middle of one of those, oh my God, go, oh my God moments, like um, everybody goes through it. Uh, uh, so don't uh, don't despair on that. So, so uh, you know, when we went through it, I thought, oh, well, it's something oh man, it's almost like something I need to hide or not like talk through or, you know, or, or be ashamed of. And, and the reality is, is that's just not the case. That's, that's kind of a natural progression of a company. So, uh, so the first one, it really became kind of that white hot burning desire, like, like to just find a way to, to, you know, get through these deals and to pay off the, the debts that I'm accruing. And because that's, you know, I, I pay my bills, you know, I'm not about not paying our bills and, um, you know, not honoring uh, commitments that I made. So getting through all that, we made that happen. And then the, then the, the next, the biggest one was, um, was we bought a hundred houses in a year that, and, you know, and that, and we spiked our normal unit count was in the three hundreds and we went up to five hundreds in a year and our ops team, just every, the quality of the renovations that we were doing, we had full three full-time project managers managing um, property updates and construction and things like that. And just everything went to hell in a handbasket. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, we looked at it and we were just miserable. And, and I think the, I think like, as far as that one goes, um, mentorship was really important for me. Cause like, especially as a business grows, the problems become more complex. And so to have somebody that's really intelligent to be able to bounce things off of and, and kind of share what's going on and what's in your head is, is, is really important. And a lot of times you may already even know the answer, but just talking it out loud and having somebody ask you intelligent questions help you get out of your own way. Um, so mentorship was really invaluable. And then um, I, you know, I've, 
you know, I know we kind of, you know, share a, a belief in, in, uh, in God and faith. So like, like that was really important kind of leaning on, <clears throat> leaning on my faith as well. And then realizing that some problems you can't work your way out of. Interesting. So like we got, so the answer was, okay, well, let's just do another deal. Right. Oh, well, let's just do another deal. Let's just do another deal. And that's great, except if your project managers are failing and properties are taking 90 days to get off the ground, that should be got, getting all got off the ground in a week. And right. because the volume and then they couldn't, it wasn't their fault because there were so many deals to work on, right? Like, like they, you know, and so then really um, uh, starting to think through things and, and realize and run the business as a business and not just seek more for more sake. Mm -hmm. So really what we started doing is, is realizing, okay, well, we need to slow down a little bit. We need to look at, okay, we just put $10,000 into direct mail mailers or are we actually getting a return on it? Or does it just right. feel like we are? And um, is it feel good activity or is it actually real true activity, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so really just getting, you know, and so then what we ended up stumbling upon or doing is, 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 is um, we thought through, we did a couple different performas. We, we pivoted our business model. Um, we cut our overhead by, uh, it was either 40 or 50% on a monthly basis at the time. And, you know, we just, we got lean, we got mean and, <laughs> and, and uh, we got dialed in. So even though we took a massive step back the following year from a unit count, uh, our profitability, I mean, it, it soared on. through the roof. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't know, I mean, as far as just the faith and the determination and just kind of like having the grit that's needed to kind of go through a struggle like that. Um, I mean, sometimes you just borrow belief from, if you have the right people around me, like my wife, Kelly has been a rock this whole time. Um, uh, I did end up marrying her. <laughs> I guess I, I left that part out of the story. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she's been a rock just having quality people around us and um, uh, just really like never giving up, just being willing to follow your dreams with a reckless uh, uh, abandon. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and as long as I was getting up every day and just trying to make it, you know, get a little bit better and doing the hustle, you know, like I... Um, uh, I was talking to one of my friends the other day and he said, you know, the, the comparison games, like a, a mother effort, right. It is right. And, and yeah. the one thing that I was fortunate enough at is I didn't start comparing myself to like some of my peers. Uh, one of my friends, I went, a couple of my friends I went to grade school with are every bit or more successful than I am. <laughs> you know, I've known them for forever. And I wasn't, you know, like comparing where we were at with, Hey, we just had this break even company. And, and, um, you know, like I just got focused on, okay, like, how do we solve this problem? What do we need to do? And I, I didn't really have an option. Like the option wasn't like going back to corporate America. I didn't know I wanted that, you know? Right. So, and then it was, and then I think I used a lot of motivation, like, man, if this thing fails, like, you know, I'm going to be kind of I'm going to have to go to all my friends and my family and my parents who told me to not ever get it, to, to not do my own thing and tell them they're all right. It's like, I am not telling them they're right. The lines in the sand. So it's your determination. I'm going to do this thing. Um, so a little bit of all of that. And, and I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is um, uh, trying to figure out like, you know, do you stop, do you give up or do you, you know, do you, do you keep going? And, and what I found is a lot of times when things got the most challenging, the most difficult, uh, when I keep going, uh, then a breakthrough happens, you know? And right, so, right. um, uh, you know, so just, I guess just being a little bit stubborn on it. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. awesome. Well, I really appreciate you, uh, jumping on today and, um, Jim, why don't you let people know where they can get a hold of you? Yeah, absolutely. So we uh, we do have our own podcast. Uh, so it's uh, Doors to Deals. That's uh, D O O R S to Deals. T O D E L D E A L S. Uh, we have a website, Doors to Deals dot com, and then we you can find us on um, uh, your favorite podcast player of cho choice. And yeah, that's probably kind of the best way to uh, uh, to get a hold of us. So. 
Well, man, I really appreciate you being on today. And again, thanks for your, your insight and your stories and um, congratulations uh, where you guys are at. And I'm looking for, I guess we'll probably see each other in what, three, four months now. I don't even, we're going to get to Yeah. That. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. I think it's about every four months in it. Yeah. yeah. So I look forward to seeing you at the next mastermind and, and I uh, appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on. You bet, buddy. Thanks a lot. Take care.